Now, we would like to do a presentation about high degree of freedom orbital deployment of CubeSat by space elevators. First, we would like to introduce ourselves. Four players, Juan Koike and Ryota Yoshimura, who belong to Nihon University, and Shingo Toyoda and Nanako Doi, who graduate from Nihon University in March, participated in this contest. Nihon University is doing basic research on space elevator transport units for many years and participates in various competitions such as USPEC for evaluation. Since 2020, we have been participating in SPEC sponsored by the Japan Space Elevator Association. In this contest, we would like to do a presentation based on our research under the topic of high degree of freedom orbital deployment of CubeSats by space elevators. We would like to talk about the background of this topic. Various services are supported our lives. In particular, information from space obtained by satellites has been used for GPS, television broadcasting, and weather observation for some time. However, in recent years, this information has also been used for services such as monitoring global warming and grasping cropping conditions. In this way, it is used in a variety of applications beyond our imagination. The emergence of small satellites called CubeSat is a factor in the rapid expansion of these new space services. Originally conceived for educational purposes, the standard for small satellites has now become a standard. Standardization and commercialization have made it easier and cheaper for private companies to provide space services. However, these services are only available for a short period of time. The reason is that there are three problems to be solved when CubeSat deploy into orbit in the future. The first, the orbit to be deployed is crowded by the satellites launched so far, so finding a gap between the orbits is necessary. The second, the ISS will be inactive by 2030, and orbit deployment from the ISS won't be possible. The third, the orbit to be deployed from a launch vehicle depends on the path of the launch vehicle. Therefore, we believe that the space elevator can solve these three problems. Currently, there are two methods of orbital deployment orbit deployment from the ISS and the launch vehicle. However, since the ISS won't be available after 2030, the means of transportation for CubeSats will be limited to launch vehicles. Transportation by conventional launch vehicles has the problem of low transportation frequency due to severe launch conditions and transportation costs. On the other hand, it was thought that using a space elevator would allow more CubeSats to be sent into space, as the loading efficiency would exceed 100% and many transportation cycles. In addition, by installing a system like the CubeSat ejection device used on the ISS called JSS OD on the space elevator body, which can launch CubeSat at an arbitrary altitude according to the purpose of the launch. Based on the above, we propose the topic of high degree of freedom orbital deployment of CubeSat by space elevators to select the deployment area. It is necessary to have a vehicle that can ascend and descend at high speed and stop at an orbitary altitude. Therefore, we believe that our research on the realization of position control corresponding to high speed movement can be applied to high degree of freedom orbital deployment of CubeSat by space elevator. First, let me introduce you to the climber. Here is a picture of the climber we made. In the following slides, we will introduce the mechanical features and the loads of the sensors installed. As a mechanical feature in our climber, 
power is transmitted from the motor to the three rollers using gears, pulleys, and timing belts. In addition, by inserting one large driving wheel and two small driving wheels as a unit against a tether with a circular cross section, it is possible to grasp the tether and ram. Three of these units are installed along the direction of the movement of the climber. Next, let's talk about sensors. One encoder is installed on the motor shaft and the drive driving wheels. The number of rotations obtained by each encoder obtains the slip and the distance travel amount of the climber against the tether. In addition, TOF sensors are used for the sensors at the upper and lower ends of the climber to obtain the distance to the buffer bumpers installed at the top and bottom ends of the tether. This video is an actual driving test at a competition and university in Japan. Next. We consider the control method. We are comparing hobby wing HV 200 ampere and VSC that we used until last year. First, last year's control using hobby wing had three problems. The first is that the starting torque is low because the motor is controlled without a sensor, making it difficult to start on its own. The second is that when you approach the target, a climber is only stopped by regenerative braking. So, the angle of the tether and other conditions can deviate from the target distance. The third is that the speed is unstable, because the disc brakes are opened and closed when descending. To solve the above problems, we investigated a new control method using VUC. This allows sensorless motors to be controlled like sensors by having a rotary encoder. By using VSC, the starting torque is increased, and when descending, the speed can be controlled by the motor without using the disc brake. In addition, by using trajectory control as shown in the figure, it moves smoothly to near the target distance and then performs PID position control. These calculations use encoder values on the driving wheels. This is because the driving wheels slip as shown in the figure, so the distance actually traveled by the climber is close to the driving wheels. Experiments were conducted on the two control methods described earlier. First, we matched parameters such as target distance and speed in the same way and evaluated how much the value of the encoder of the driving wheel deviated from the target distance. The experimental results are shown in the table. In the conventional control method using hobby wing, both the driving wheels and the driving wheels deviate from the target distance. On the other hand, in the control method using VUC, the driving wheels are quite close to the target distance. So we were able to improve the accuracy of the position control considerably. However, if the driving wheels itself is not able to obtain an accurate value due to slip, etc., it will deviate from the target distance. By further developing the developer system, climbers can move at high speed recognize their position and stop. However, with our current control method that relies on the value of the encoder, there is a deviation in the value due to slip. Therefore, this year we are considering another self-position estimation method so as not to rely on the encoder. If climbers can accurately recognize their own position, it will be possible to finally divide the deployment altitude and launch CubeSat and it will be possible to operate many CubeSats even in a narrow space. In the future, we hope that the idea of high degree of freedom of the deployment of CubeSats by space elevators, which is the subject of this research, will become a reality.